What's up guys, this is Jake from Fish Tech, and today we're gonna to be talking about the new MacBook Pro with Vega 20 graphics. Now I have the i7 2.6 gigahertz model, and what I'm interested in seeing is uh, a comparison between this and the i9 model. Is the i9 even worth it, uh, or is it the same story as the mid-2018 MacBook Pro where there was literally no point in getting the i9? So let's get into some benchmarks and we'll get a conclusion for you. So for the test that I did with the i7, I'm going to be comparing them to another YouTuber, Max Yuri, uh, who is just awesome. He's always doing comparisons of different laptops, uh, but he didn't happen to have the i7 model. So uh, I figured, you know, I would do some tests and compare to the numbers that he got with the i9. Um, so starting off with the Geekbench 4 CPU test, my i7 got a single core score of 5343 and a multi of 23,967. Uh, and that, those both actually fell short to what Max got. Um, and ours scored very similar, similarly to an i9 with a 560X in it from the mid 2018 model. So, uh, still scoring better. The temperatures uh, must be better. Moving on from there, we got the Geekbench GPU test, um, where we actually surprisingly scored 77,975, uh, which beats Max's configuration with the i9 by about 8%. And I thought that was that was very strange because that is appears to be outside the margin of error, which to me would be a 5%, uh, give or take. Um, so that was really odd to me. Maybe it's because the i7 uh, runs cooler when it's just standing there. So the GPU can, uh, can take more advantage of the temperature uh, cooling system, um, whereas his i9 is already going to be hotter sitting at that base clock. Um, so I, don't, I thought that was odd, but maybe that's the explanation. Going on to the Unigen Heaven benchmark, uh, we scored a 39.3 frames per second with a score of 991, which was uh, ever so slightly higher than what Max got, but totally within uh, a normal range for testing discrepancies. Uh, from there, we went to the Cinebench R15. When we did the five times CPU test, we got a score of 1,072 compared to Max's 1,068. Now, if these CPUs were supposed to be different, why are they scoring nearly identical on a CPU test? Well, what happens is you run this test five times in a row and you start heating the system up. Now, these two CPUs are gonna maintain basically the same boost clock. So they're not, they're obviously not gonna take advantage of their full uh, boosting abilities. Once they start ramping up, they're going to be at about the same clock speed. I remember Max mentioned he was at roughly 3.3 gigahertz, um, and I was following what mine was at, and it was about the same as jumping between, you know, like 2.8 and sometimes a jump up to 3.7, but mostly was around that 3.3 range, which, you know, for something that's this thin and light, uh, that's not bad. They've definitely improved it from the last model. So I think what we can conclude from this is, uh, no, the i9 is definitely still not worth it. Um, on the first test uh, for the Geekbench 4 CPU, uh, the reason why Max most likely scored decently higher is because it wasn't really taxing the system, so it was able to utilize its clock speed a little bit better. Uh, but as soon as you start doing something that is demanding, uh, the i7 and the i9 are going to test nearly exactly the same uh, in a real world scenario. So because they're utilizing the same cooling system, they're not going to be able to achieve their desired clock speed. So uh, they're both always gonna throttle. It's definitely not worth it to go for the i9. Uh, so my recommendation is just get the i7, save yourself $300, um, and that's it. If you guys enjoyed this video, 
Um, consider subscribing. This is the first video that I've made for a tech channel. Um, so I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Some feedback would be great. Uh, and if you happen to dislike this video, then uh, just give it a thumbs down uh, and then tell me what I need to do better. So thank you guys for watching. See ya.